Right, welcome back YouTube. Today we've got a, a banger set. We've got Coach Baxter in from Prescript. Baxter is one of the most intelligent guys in the industry. His knowledge is incredible and he's definitely one of the people that makes me shut the fuck up and listen when he speaks. And not many people can actually do that. Now, personally for me, I've never really had any education. People that know me, actually Alex went to school with me, so he knows what I'm like. And these guys are the first people that have actually given me some quality education that I was able to take in and learn from and apply. So as you can imagine, I definitely value everything they put out and more than anybody else, to be honest, in the industry right now. Now, Baxter is definitely the brain of the operation, as Jordan would always say. So today you are gonna get a lot of value from the video. Now, that's a little bit of introduction from me from Baxter. But now we'll let Baxter introduce himself, tell you guys what he does, what he's got planned for the future as well, uh, what he's up to and what he's actually got in the pipe works of Prescript as well. So you guys can get insight to that and uh, hopefully they can actually join and sign up as well for you as well. Yeah. So give him a full lowdown and I will meet you down there because I'm going to do some planks. So Max, tell them all about yourself and tell them what you've got planned and what you're currently doing as well. So my name is Coach Baxter, or Kyle Baxter. I uh, work for Prescript in the content creation department, um, education. Uh, I'm a physiotherapist. My specialty is making all the physio things very simple and bringing all of the education to trainers so that they can extend their scope and use all the information to help their clients. Um, I think a lot of it gets very misconstrued and seems very complicated, but as you'll see today, all of the thing, the main bulk of the workout will be exactly the same, but the prep work, the little cues, the stuff at the end, that's what really makes a big difference in not just training, but continuing to train long-term injury-free, right? We understand that bodybuilding is a long-term thing. If you can train for longer, you're gonna be bigger, and that's kind of where people get people kind of get confused. It's not about a quick fix, it's about training properly over a long time. So with Prescript, we got a lot of stuff coming down the pipe in the next year or so, a couple new courses, uh, so look out for those. Now, as far as Prescript goes as well, it's, it's stuff that's definitely applicable for any coach, any bodybuilder like myself. And I can also say the way these guys deliver, the way they coach, the way they educate, is amazing because for someone like me with no educational background and I hated school, for me to be able to say that I've actually genuinely enjoyed the courses, you know, that goes a long way. Because uh, generally my attention span when someone starts talking is very, very little. These guys, it's a lot different. So anyone that's got any sort of passion for the sport, bodybuilding, training, anything that you do in general that's related to strength sports, or you're a PT or a coach, this is probably the man that you need to speak to if you want to get better further your knowledge or if you've got any questions as well. So, upper body, prehab work, for longevity and basically staying not fucked. Yeah, so easiest thing you can do, two, two tests. We need to get the arm behind the back and we need to get the arm overhead, right? So I pin my shoulder down. Can I get my arm all the way back without my shoulder blade coming over, right? If we think about training chest or training back muscles, we want the shoulder blade to move or we want the shoulder blade to stay where it is, we want the arm to move. If I can't get all of this range, right? I can't get into the bottom of a press, I can't get into the bottom of a row, right? And then with the overhead position, I need to be able to not shrug up, I want the scat to come up. So if I'm trying to stretch my lat, if I can't get here, can't put tension across there. If I can't get here, I can't do a high press without rolling the shoulder over, right? The biggest thing I see is the lack of extension 
right? I'm a very sternum down kind of guy, so I'm gonna lap this. You know why people have a hard time growing their upper chest? Because they can't stretch it out ever, yeah. right? I need Always to be able to get this. this up. Now I can actually stretch my upper chest fibers, right? Most people have problems growing muscles because either the muscles are already on 24 seven, right? Glutes, we'll talk about that later. Or the muscles are, we can't actually stretch them out to then contract them again, right? I can't contract my upper chest, it's already contracted. So test number one, can you put your arm back here without your shoulder rolling over and without your ribs coming up, right? And can you put your arm over your head at least to about 120 degrees with your elbow facing forward? Pretty good. Right, after 120, we will start to kind of come over, but elbow at 120 and elbow back. If you can do that every, before every single workout, now I know if I'm doing a pull or a press that I have the range. I'm moving through muscles, I'm not moving through my joint. I know that I have the range to do any exercise. Pretty straightforward. Beautiful. Yeah. I'm not, I'm sure not too bad. That's, uh, that's as far as it'll go. Not terrible, not terrible. Whenever we are trying to get more range of motion, right, we have yep. to stay within our available range, right? So for you, if you can't get all the way up here, when you do a kettlebell bottom under press, whatever prep you would do, yep. once you get to here, yep. you're probably just gonna like shrug up. Generally when it gets to here. You stop, or you do that, right? Yeah. So we wanna make sure before we do that, we wanna give you the range, and then we practice in the range with your bottom under press or whatever drill stabilizing that range and then we go into our lifts yeah right so we're going to give you a little bit more open up the back of your rib cage which is going to allow your scap to come up it's going to allow you to get over here yeah. which is going to allow you to put tension across your lat a lot better yeah right if my rib cage is smushed forward my lat is yeah. contract all the time i need to get this back so i can put tension across there so literally one of my favorite exercises super simple find something to hold on to so yeah. your arms are reaching low you're gonna go into a deep squat position. Yep. It's gonna lean back and you're gonna breathe in. You're gonna feel between your ribs or between your scaps expander there. And you're just gonna lean back so you find some heel pressure. And you're gonna breathe in there. And just open up across your rib cage here, yeah? Yeah, so I don't wanna think about pushing my arms forward. I wanna think about my arms are here yep. and I'm bringing my rib cage back in space. Yep. Right, right yeah. There we go, good. And then sit down, chest up, stir them up. Good, then take a breath out, slow. Quiet, 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 quiet. Good, hold your mouth closed, slow breath through your nose. Good, chest up a little bit. Perfect, so when we're trying to use breath to move the rib cage, we need diaphragm one here, diaphragm two in your pelvis to be stacked over top of each other, and we need to have sternum up so that we make this nice cylinder, right, that we usually talk about during lifting, but we need to talk about it while we're moving the ribcage back and forth. And then our breath should be as quiet as possible, right, so slow inhale through your nose, slow exhale through your mouth, really silent, right, relaxing down. And we should feel this space fill with air a little bit more every inhale. The inhale is the key here. Right, but being as quiet as possible, using air to push the rib cage open, not all these big muscles to pull the rib cage open. Right, if I breathe in fast, look at my neck. My neck muscles, my pecs are just ripping my rib cage open and then squishing it. I want to use air to move it from the inside out. Good, so hop up there, put your arm over your head. Okay now. Right. <laughs> so when we think about making range of motion changes or like prep exercises, we're just modulating the nervous system. So basically all our prep work is gonna be this. <laughs> yeah. So it's just like the nervous system, you make an immediate change. Yeah. It's the same as what you're doing with a foam roller or a massage gun. You're not actually doing anything to the muscle. You're just, the brain is like, oh, okay, cool. We should probably relax this muscle. With breathing, it's the same thing. As you, as you breathe in, your muscles need to relax to allow your rib cage to move or the air literally wouldn't come in. Right, so we breathe in slow, we move rib cage out, everything relaxes, we have more range of motion, we prep that range of motion, then we train. It literally takes two seconds. So I probably do five or six breaths and then on to it. 
I'm going to get Baxter to do some prep work for us. And I will list it out with the video as well. So you guys can use it as well. Now we need to open up the front, which is going to allow our arm to get back. Pretty simple. So we probably don't have like back here. If we go back, maybe we round over here. So we want to stay within the range that we have. So we're going to go about here. I'm going to put my hands on the bench. Still keeping all parts of my foot, pulling my shoulders down, not letting my elbows lock. What happens when my elbows lock? My pecs squeeze. My pecs squeeze, my sternum goes down. So my sternum's up, squeezing shoulder blades down, not letting my elbows lock, and then I'm just going to breathe out. Watch my logo on my shirt. Yeah, expand straight away. Uh, Quiet breath, can't hear me breathe. And you'll see, once I start to take an, a deep inhale, I'll get to the point where I'm opening up new range. I'll be unstable. I'll start to shake. Right there, right at the end. A little bit unstable. Hold that oblique tension on the way out. And then one Squeeze more. the obliques in, yeah? As you exhale, the air will come out slowly. And right at the end, you'll feel a little bit of obliques. You don't want to squeeze, but you want to hold it in. And then as you come out, inhale. And then as I'm done here, no shirt wrinkles, right? Even if you wear an oversized shirt, you shouldn't have shirt wrinkles. And then I can put my hand behind my back and touch my other shoulder blade without this rounding over, right? If you're really big, your <laughs> muscles might literally get in the way. But for most people, this is a great test. So similar to like if you were to load on your foot, I want you to feel pressure on both sides of your hand. Right? Yeah. This is the same with any exercise. Right? If I have something in my hand, I should be pushing here and pushing here. Right? If I'm doing a press, so here I want to do the same thing. Right? Find weight, uh, feet a little bit closer together. Perfect. Everything's aligned. He pulls his shoulders down. Right? If you can't figure out how to pull your shoulders down, shrug up first and then pull them down. So if he shrugs and then pulls them down, good. That's what he wants to feel. His elbows aren't locked out. He exhales first. He'll feel some obliques, super quiet. And then as he breathes in, that nice JP logo comes up, right? And he's putting tension, right? Relieving tension from here, because his pec is expanding. This is gonna allow us to train some upper back a little bit better. Right, and you can see, it gets hard. Once you get into that, that range that you're not used to, you're like, oh wow, this is hard. And your elbows wanna lock out to give you stability through your elbow joint, right? You're starting to go on this side of your hand, keep on both sides of your hand. This is the same when, when we start to think of squats, when it gets hard, what happens? You lose part of your foot, right? We, if we only are pushing in part of our hand or part of our foot, we're just moving the whole body as an orientation and not getting range of motion through joints that we want, right? So same thing with arms, same thing with legs. I actually got a bit of a back pump now. <laughs> right? That's literally the prep I do. Get your arm overhead. Get your arm behind your back. Once you do that, go train. It's as simple as that. Across all your body work. Yeah. That's, that's it. That, those are the two tests I do. And that's there's, it. There's a zillion ways to get there. Yeah. yeah. Right? Stay within your range. Yeah. So if, you're, if you are here and you can't get any higher than here, you have from here to here to work with. You're going to do a really low reach. You're going to breathe into your back. It's going to give you a little bit more. And then you can come here. And then maybe you hold on to something here, it opens up your chest, and you'll get higher and higher and higher, right? Cooper takes care of himself. He's pretty good to start, but there'll be some of you who can't do this. You'll go out right away, or you won't be able to get up. Stay within your active range. Find the range you need, right? So maybe you're just starting off, or you're super, super stuck. Doing a pull-up might not be a good idea, right? So across the blocks or across the weeks, we slowly gain more range and then use it. That's the key, right? A lot of people will just do this stuff and then not go train. Once you train in those ranges, you don't lose them. And then maybe block three, we have a super high overhead press and a pull-up, right? But people are just like, oh, I, I can go here. And then to get here in a press, I have to do this. And then I'm doing this all the time. And then I get jammed here. I'm like, oh, my back hurts. I'm actually not too bad. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah. But right. all these things can make immediate changes. Pretty cool. Oh, yeah, 100%. So cool. Make sure you have ranges before you train, and then train.
Training is mo still the most important part. I've seen you do that before pressing as well. Yeah. So basically, similar to like, similar to a heel elevation. Yep. It's pretty much the same concept. If I'm super far forward, everything is kind of squished and I have no range of motion, right? So if I'm on my toes, it's gonna to be hard for me to squat down, right? Or my heels are gonna come off the ground. If I'm over here and I try to squat, I can't go very far. But if I come back and I try to squat, yeah. I can sit right down onto this, right? So it's the same as this. I'm, this is literally the hand and the foot, the same thing. So I'm elevating my hand, which is gonna shift everything back which is gonna allow me to actually breathe and have less muscular activity. So if I'm over here, so if you watch, watch my chest, if I'm here and I breathe in, nothing really happens. I can't, it's hard for me to get a breath because I'm so stiff from being over top of my base support. But if I go back behind my base support, similar to if you can't squat very low, you give someone a heel elevation, it shifts them back, they squat lower, right here. I'm elevating my hands, it shifts me back. I'm in less extension, I'm in more flexion. It immediately allows me, as long as my elbows don't lock out, to get a nicer breath. I can actually take a quiet breath, and it's just like a, like a little bit of a cheat code. Just before all your presses. Yeah, so I just do like 10 breaths here. And that's it. Yeah. And then I do a couple of warm-up sets. Yep, ready to go. Same, exactly the same as you guys are doing, and then let's go into it. Right. Sweet. Like, I try to make it as efficient. Like, I want to lift. I don't want to do this. It's boring. Yeah. Right? But I want to make sure that I can get into the right positions and lift forever. Generally, when I get in, I'm probably doing too much then, too much, uh, too much prep work. I mean, there's never, no such thing as too much. Yeah. But, like, if you can be... Yeah, if you can be more like dialed in with it, you can be more efficient. Yeah. Right? A lot of people It does help me, because I generally spend ten minutes. Yeah. Ten minutes. I do a planks. Do a little bit of banded work. Kettlebell bottom uh, kettlebell bottom under press. Y rays. Um serratus press. Yeah. Just a set of each. And then I crack on. Right? Which is which is okay for you because you have the time. Yeah. But imagine you only had an hour in here. Yeah, yeah. That 10 minutes, one six of your time spent doing prep, yeah. right? Like, I want to spend a minute and a half doing prep and then just warm up. So basically, when I've got a busy day, just do that and crack on. Yeah, right. right? It, sometimes, if you come in here and you do this and you do this, right, some days you'll feel great. It's like, why do I need to do this when I'm already, I can already do this, right? Most days for, for upper, I can, I'm pretty good. Lower, sometimes I, sometimes I prep, but like this would be the most one because I'm kind of like this. Right, you're a little bit the other way yeah. from me. Your your shoulder would just squeeze oh, yeah. back so much. So with, you need to open up the back a little with bit. With me, more. that's the problem because I struggle breathing into my diaphragm. Yeah. Because of that, so you might need to show me a couple of bits to help with that. Yeah, I think really just like breathing slower and quieter is like that's how you that's how you eliminate like the accessory muscles doing the work, right? Because you you have so much accessory muscles, like you're neck muscles will just rip your ribcage open, and then your lats and pecs will just squeeze your ribcage to get the air out. So what I want you to try on this, before you hang, yep. I want you to get that breath between your shoulder blades. And then hold. Right, so I've moved the bench a little bit closer. So if I'm here, I'll just, Right? If I'm here and extended, I'm never gonna get my hat in my shoulder over my yep. or my head over my head. Yep. If I'm back here, so I move my rib cage back. Now I breathe in. Could see I can actually the expand there. Yep. Right. And then once I'm here, now I'm not extended. My shoulders over my head. Yep. Now I can hold this position. Now I do my leg raise. Right. Right. Or my knee raise, depending on what we want. Right. So for me. I like doing a knee raise so I can get a little bit more yep. movement of my abs. Knee raise it is then. One more set. Right. The way back has done it. If you're really strong and you can get your legs up all the way, I like that very end range spine flexion. So like I find if you look at my spine, I'm not getting a ton of spine movement. Yep. Right? You need to almost go like on toes to bar. But for here I can get all the way through. Crunch up. 
and then I combine breathing with it, exhale. right? So an inhale, inhale and like a ball. forceful exhale. Yep. And find that ab contraction, move my spine around a little so, bit more. For prep work, for example, right? When I get in, I like to do a planks because I fucking hate them. So I like to start with something I hate. So I'm gonna do a planks anyway. Yeah. Do the breathing drill, seat a toe pin up. Yeah. And then would you then go and do this as well for a couple of sets? Yeah. Just for breathing and yabs before pressing and pulling. Right, so now we opened up the range with like a lower level exercise, right? Yeah. Less gravity. Yeah. Now we introduce gravity and still move that around. Yeah. Right, because if you can't move your rib cage, there's no way you're getting into the position I just got in. You'll just be in extension all yep. the time, which means you actually won't actually be moving your abs. You'll just be doing like hip flexors, rep fem yep. things. So we open up range unloaded. Yep. Then we use that range semi-loaded with some gravity. I have seen you make a post about this. That's what I'm asking. And then now we can use that under a lot of load. Yeah. Right. So now when I shift back in my single arm pull down, my ribs will actually move. I won't just be shifting my rib cage back as an orientation, I'll actually be moving my ribs, which is moving my scap and moving my lat, and then I can put tension across fibers a lot better. Similar with lower body stuff. Yes. Unloaded, a little bit more gravity, then loaded. And then loaded. You can almost get his shoulder all the way over his head now, arm all the way over his head. Before, we were like here, but we need to breathe into the space. Now, you can actually move. Good, try to control the end range. There we go, even more. Up, 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 there we go. See, key here, his sternum stays straight. Right, a lot of people when they're holding on, their sternum will drop down, dialed in. Beautiful. Okay, sternum up just a little bit. You get a little bit more range here. Oh yeah. Perfect. And don't let your rib cage come towards the bench. Almost like push yourself away. There we go. Right there. Perfect. Keep going. Keep this elbow soft. Don't walk it. There we go. That's better. Your foot. I'm like, hey, I lose this part of my foot on half squat. I lose this part of my hand on bench press. Genuine one pressing as well. That shoulder always feels a little bit off compared to the right. Yeah, this this is the one. This arm struggles to get overhead a little bit more. Yeah, it does. Yeah. This arm struggles to get behind yeah. your back a little bit more. That side lat, that side lat's bigger. That side lat's smaller. Yeah. But shoulders bigger. Yeah. Right. Your yeah. shoulders bigger because you can't use your chest as well. Yeah. Right. You'll find like the outside. You'll lose the outside of your hand on pressing on that arm probably. Yeah. And then you'll have like a little bit more extension through that wrist. Yeah. If you watch, you got finding the outside. This is the same as this. Right, so. Just to make sure I keep full contact point with my hand yeah. when I'm pressing. You see how like on your warm ups you'll feel, if you can keep that, you, it'll come down way. So what happens is you'll go, do here. Yeah. And then this will come like this. Yeah. As soon as you do this, you'll be able to get it full right okay. away. So when I have the tension, even though it's like even not that much, it's hard for me to get the space that I want. So I usually grab it, especially with like single arm rows. I'll grab like the implement with both hands. So now like this has no tension and I can push my ribcage back. Now watch when I breathe in. Yeah. Get so much stress through that lat and then I just keep that ribcage position. Making sure my stern doesn't drop as I go through. There it is. Yep, 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 come on. Obviously, not talking about Mark here, but generally, see a lot of clients, 
start shifting the pelvis back. Yeah. So they're almost like, they're almost like this. Right, so like when I'm here, yep. if I can't get extension in my shoulder, I'm gonna get either this, or I'm gonna get extension somewhere else, right here. Yep. Right? So yep. if I don't have extension in my shoulder, yep. I'm gonna get it somewhere else. Right? On something like this where it's angled, yep. depending on your body shape, right? Like you can see like we're quite straight up, because that's where your body shape is and that's yep. how you can fall. Kuba's kinda in the middle and I'm a little smaller. I'm quite leaned over to get the position that I want, but we're leaned over at the pelvis and the rib cage together, right? We're not dissociating those. So like you're quite straight up, but we're dialed in rib cage pelvis sack. Who was a little bit more over than me, and then I'm a, over even more, but like rib cage and pelvis are still lined up, right? I'm just making the machine fit me. Good, but push this towards my head. There, there, see, that's, that's what you want. Okay. Now pull. Right. We can't get something short if it's already short. Sure. Yeah. Keep this against my hand, but reach a little bit more. You keep your sternum on the pad. Yeah. There we go. All right. There we go. Come on. That's perfect. Every like this now. Come on. And drive. Yes. More, 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 more. Come on. One more rep, one more fucking rep, one more rep, one more rep. Fucking squeeze it through, come on. Show me now. Drive, 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 drive. Beautiful rep, beautiful rep, that's the rep, good. Well done. Strap in, it's going to be heavy as fucking lengthen now. Okay. But it's going to drop off a lot in short. Okay, perfect. Let's go, Max. Right, I'll assist on a couple, let's go. Drive, drive, drive. Right, couple more, couple more, couple more. Let's take it all the way. Drive, 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 drive. Again. Drive, come on, stay locked in. One more, one more, one more, come on. One more. Beautiful. Here we fucking go. There we go. Yep. Got you a little bit. Yep. There you go. I didn't help on any. I didn't help on any. That was perfect. I want to make you. sure just in case. That was perfect. For something like this, that I'm like, I'm, I very much struggle to get in the shortened position, a right? Bit. Like during the start of a block, like I might want to do more sets on this setting, yeah. right? To learn how to get it short. So when I make it on the other setting where it's really hard in the short, I can actually get it there, right? Like that set was a lot better for me the first set I really struggled getting it short because yeah. I already struggled getting it short. Yeah. So like that's when the prime, the prime pieces might be a little bit More better. Beneficial. And you can change them like not just the start of the workout, we need to get it short so we want it heavier there. It's like the person dictates where the tension is until yeah. we're good in all ranges, then we then apply we can... tension where we need it, right? Write that down with a focus. Okay. But then I go too much, where I took my rib cage down, but then my sternum goes in as well. Yeah. Whereas now, my rib cage is down, with my sternum slightly lifted, so much more range. It's like, automatically. Yeah, straight away, I can, I can literally go like this. I mean, so it's like, yeah, it's perfect. The, the pandemic used to be arched backs. Yeah. The new pandemic is sternums down. Yeah. Everyone's figured out this. Yeah. Everyone's just like, oh, so crunch your shit down. It's like, no, this needs to be up, and this needs to be back. So, the main thing for people is, this is your rib cage. This stays down, but not this. So often when I cue people to take their rib cage down, 
that actually see too much flexion at the spine and the sternum goes down. That's not what you want. You want to maintain this, which is almost like a proud chest with the ribcage tucked. There's a big difference. Right, so I would almost cue like ribcage back instead of ribcage down, because I don't want my ribcage to go down. Then my sternum goes down. I want my ribcage to be back, yeah. So you see how I'm kind of arched here? I don't want to just crunch and still stay forward. I want to be back in space. And then I already automatically get this Straight right, lengthened, yeah. yeah. Right, and this will be gripping, where your ribcage will still be forward. Think about like, if I was to draw a line up here, this should be kind of back. See, my sternum doesn't move. It's still pointing straight forward. And then now, I just like, little bit of lean, little bit of lateral flexion, line it up. Perfect. Right, so for me, I have troubles getting this short because this sternum wants to drop and this wants to come over, right? So I'm, I'm thinking all the time as I come here, as I drive, I want this sternum to stay where it is so I can get this short, no shirt wrinkles, that's a contracted lat. I have troubles on this side, so does Cuba, right? That's the small lat side. Struggle to get it super short. Stay, stay tall, taller, tall. yeah, there we go. There we go. And then, Hold up, take, take an exhale. Slower, slower, slower. Stir them up. Take a nice inhale. There, now go. So I, I, took, the, I took the weight for him, so we weren't crushing his rib cage. And then we put air there, filled that space. Now we just use that space, perfect. Right, so for, for you, grab, grab with the left hand, yeah. and then grab with the right hand as well. Yeah. So there's no weight on this hand. And then think about this, breathe into there. Now you're there, now you have it, now I just go. So I'll keep you through it. So pull it, pull it down, good. And then pull this back, away from, not, not your, rib, uh, your rib cage back. Right, tuck this down, there we go, yeah, there we go. And then breathe in, breathe out. Let's go one more. Stir them up. Good. Breathe in. There. Feel that? Now go. See how we have a lat that wraps the rib cage? Right there. Look, no wrinkles. Perfect. Whew. One breath. That's all we need. Huge stretch right away, right? So think about it almost like when you're here, I'm moving the space between my spine and my scap backwards. So put your hand. Put your hand right there. Yeah. Uh, up a little bit. There. Okay. Yeah. So when I'm here, I'm yeah. moving that space. Yeah. Ready? My shoulder blade doesn't move, but I'm moving that space oh, yeah. towards you right there. Feel yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. And then now, fill that with air. See me push into you? Yes. And now, see how much stretch I have there? Yep. Yeah. Dial in. Easy. Find pressure on that foot. There it is. Drive. Easy. Good. Try to breathe in my, I'm already big back here. I try to breathe into my chest. So I don't keep it down here when I breathe. I keep it out here 
right? So my scap upperly rotates a little bit, blocks off the space in the back. So now when I breathe in, watch right here, I can get that chest up, right? My sternum up, which allows me to help me get short. So we're cueing different things here, right? For Cuba, we need that sternum up so we can get that right side short, right? Here, we need to keep this rib cage back so we have trouble getting into lengthen, right? So cues are personal, right? I don't, if we cue sternum up here, we're not gonna ever get long. Right, we need to cue this back. We get in the lengthened. Then we can dial it in. We're already good in the shortened. Look at that. So different cues for different people. So a lot of teaching points, especially when it comes to different positions, different cues. Which again, when it comes to training, beauty of training, when you work with different physiques, different body shapes, different sizes, you have to use personalized cues to actually allow people to get in correct positions to be able to perform movements effectively. So, as much as it makes me laugh when people say just train hard, just training hard is okay for some people because they're naturally fit into certain movements, but it's not okay for others. You have to think outside the box to really tailor and structure things towards an individual. So we're, now we're kind, of, we're kind of in the middle of the pull down and the row we did before. Yes, uh... Right, so we need rib cage back. We need sternum up. This is when we're going overhead bilaterally. This is when things get a little bit shaky, right? So he's gonna use hamstrings to cue his pelvis. He's gonna find that position. Good, he gets up there as much as he needs to stretch, dials it in, and he just keeps out the whole time. Good, get it? A lot of people, again, when they do get in uh, any, any pull down reel variation, you always see this. Yeah. So when you're in this, not only you're not in a stable position, but you can't really get a decent amount of range of motion because yeah. you're already flexed. So I think that's the biggest point for people is actually taking care of this and what this is actually doing yeah. and this. So look at Bax's position now here and his arm path. His arm path is perfectly in line with his upper back. And he's actually getting full, pretty decent amount of protraction and retraction. So there, and it drives it all the way through where I can actually feel the shoulder blade squeezing my fingers. Boom, perfect. Right, one more, one more at least, come on. Work now, Lex, come on. Take it all the way, all the way. Beautiful. See the second last rep there, no, third last rep for me. I lost position, I came forward and then I, I hit the top, right? And then I was like, shit, I dialed it in, Kuba cued me, I got the last two, right? If that's changing, that shouldn't change the whole time, right? I lost position, I fucked it, it hit the top, I lost tension, then I dialed it back in, right? Little cue that I know that everything wasn't dialed as much as it could have been. Beautiful look. You can see with this, see his torso position? It's a little bit more back than Kuba. Right, so wider rib cage has a little bit less to go through upward rotation, a little bit more to go through protraction. So we're back a little bit more. Me and Kuba are a little bit more upwardly rotated, so we're stay a little bit taller. Right, still getting full range through the upper back. Let's go, let's go. No. Okay. Just making sure. So, reason why I always, always do unilateral movements for that work, I just find an easy connection with it, and that's I can get into more sort of the structure side of things. I've got really short arms, and for my shape and my mobility, it's not a good idea to do any bilateral work for lat movements. Whereas Bax, on the other side, he's actually pretty proficient at that, so you can see both sides for rowing from this perspective now. For me, unilateral work is king, but backs doesn't really matter. Yeah. So for for any lat work really, if I'm doing unilateral, I can kind of move my rib cage around. I can turn on the bench to get a nice position. Bilateral, it's like I need that range of motion on both sides at all times, and I, there's no getting out of it. If I don't have it, you're gonna see 
some fucked up stuff, right? You're gonna see me round over. You're gonna see my shoulders come over. That's exactly Unilateral, me we can get it, right? So it's like, if you don't have that, unilateral all day, but know that so we can work towards being able to do everything. Doesn't mean we have to do everything. We should be able to do everything. So biggest key here, bilateral lats. I can't have the sternum pointing at my junk. I need to keep the sternum forward, rib cage back. So we're... This is probably your wheelhouse, right? Your, no? Yep. Start to crunch, stay tall. There it is, right there. Yep. It's getting long and you started to do this, yeah. and then I yelled and you were like, oh, and you got that stretch right there, right at the end. Yeah. Right, you, you're good at the start, and then as it gets hard, yeah. you start to tilt more and more and more, so you don't lengthen that lat. You're just keeping it short. You don't quite get down here, but you're kind of get here. And then I yelled and you were like, and you got that length right at the end. Keep my hand here for the first one. There, feel that stretch? That's good. Good. Yep, yep, yep. I think it's hard out there. Yeah. Now we're tired. We want to we want to stay where it's where yeah. it's easy. We want to stay in the short, right? So now when we we need to get the length yeah. there, as soon as you push that ribcage back, yeah, yeah. like if you look from behind, well, obviously you can't see it during your Stretch set. There should be no no wrinkles in your top. Yeah. So generally, what I do to fix that, and I have to do on a pull down, is to get my lat lengthened. As I get in position, I tend to get in. And all I actually do is actually sharply exhale fully. Yeah. And then once I've exhaled, slight crunch on my oblique, and then I inhale. Mm -hmm. And that's generally what I've been queuing for a long, long time just to get myself learning to actually get in the position. Yeah. So the oblique contraction is good, but we don't want so much yeah. that we're stuck here. And then when we breathe in, we can't get any movement. Yeah. Right? So slight crunch, you feel the oblique, you're there, you're lined up, and then when he inhales, now that air can actually move his ribcage. If we're dialed in and crunching everything, it's li never it, It's literally, move. so there's no compression. It's just slight tension across the oblique. Yeah, so you want, just want to feel yeah. it. Yeah, literally just the tension. Not, not a total crunch, but it's just a bit of tension there just to keep it on. There you go, perfect. That spot right there. Good, don't lose the height. See what? Don't lose the height. Mm. That perfect, see? <coughs> As you go through, no wrinkles, he drives, <coughs> dialed in. Let's go, almost there. <coughs> yeah.
the best drug variation of all time. Now, all the meatheads think that the, the traps are only made up of these muscles here. This is your trap. This entire part of your back is your actual trap. So if you want to train your actual traps effectively, this is the movement you need to be doing. Not a weird chicken dance standing there with dumbbells throwing up and down. This is what's going to build the meatiest traps you can find on the market, in the business right now to complete your whole back development. Write that down, we'll focus. Yeah, so with your, with the same thing with this lat that can't get down, this side, right, is a little bit more over. So we're kind of, we elevate early, same with me, on this side, yeah. right? So then we, as we come back, we can't get this side as short, can't get this side as long. Do um, you have one more set of this, of struts? I can do another one. Okay, okay. Do, do another one and I'll cue you into, a, we'll kind of turn you a little bit. Yeah. To, like the machine will pull you into the right position because we'll actually set up like a smidge staggered yeah. and then it'll be a back off so a little bit lighter we'll get that position and you'll feel the difference a little bit more there now go good keep your head back there stay tall yeah there we go reach drive good you want to get that length right where this sweat patch is See that? Now we shorten it up. Perfect. Set up your sternum yeah. and set up your rib cage. Shift it to the left yeah. just a little bit. So I'll cue you through it. Get rid of these straps. So set up like normal. Yeah. And then turn your rib cage to the left a little bit. Yep. Yeah. And then you should feel a big stretch here as you reach. Yep. Good. This will allow you to get a little bit shorter here now. Now go. So I'm cheating a little bit, right? So to get these even now, I just turn his rib cage on the machine. The machine puts him in a place where this can stretch better, this can shorten better. Now we get a full range on both sides dialed in, right? Probably feels a massive stretch right here on this side. And then here, it's harder to get short usually but we can get it short, returning the rib cage on the machine. A little bit of a cheat code. Finish it. There we go. How's that? Perfect. So what I want you to think about is wait here, yep. wait here, and wait here. As you come up, don't lose the weight right there. Full contact point yeah. of the foot. So one, two, three, four. Yep. Big toe is four. Don't lose any of them as you come up. Good, the foot's glued to the ground. Let the knees come in a little bit on the way down. Yeah, there we go. That's how you stretch glutes. Perfect, right there. Oh, yeah. So the lat and the glute yep. are the same. We just don't really think about it like that. Yep. Right, so the lat wraps around the rib cage. The lat, well, the glute wraps around your pelvis. The glute wrapped around your pelvis, yeah. right? So if I'm doing lats here, yep. the same as doing glutes here. Yeah, right? perfect. So I need to wrap the glute around the pelvis. So if I'm Mate. more straightforward. Fuck me. Right? And then as soon as, so if I'm wobbly on my foot, yeah. it's the same thing as being wobbly on my hand. I wouldn't push through bench press here. Yeah. I want to push through my whole hand. Same thing as the foot. I'm going to make a cheat code for you, though. Right. And your knees are right. this side, too. Good. No, don't lose pressure here. Don't lose pressure here. Don't lose pressure here. You do that. Now go. See it? Right. See there? You can push into there at the top now. Perfect. Good. Push. Yep. 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 Yeah. You're, you're strong, and you're good at lifting weight, but. Lifting weight doesn't matter. <clears throat> Putting tension across fibers matters, right? So we want to stretch your glutes around your pelvis. <clears throat> so more, the more we can have our foot into the ground, <clears throat> the more actually movement we get all the way up the chain. So I had a really bad <clears throat> Yeah. And I've got no 
<laughs> yeah. Right? So you're... Yeah. Exactly. Right? So, like, if we... I'm just guessing. But if we were to take your shoe off, you'd, like you'd either be like this, right? So, like, your big toe is there, but this is off the ground. And, like, I can't push into my glute, right? So what would happen here is we'd either get this or we get this. And so I lose the fifth or I lose the first, right? But I'm just like, okay, ground, bring to you. Oh, okay, cool. Now we can push in. Maybe, because yeah. we're doing shortened position, maybe a little bit wider, a little bit flared to help you get short. Yep. But as long as we can keep those four points of contact. Yep. Three, two, one. Don't lose right there. There it is. Good. Make sure we get that right glute. Yep. Fuck me, my ass. That way. That's yeah, good, right? That way better. Right. So yeah, all, all lower body. This is really why most people have like bad lower body mobility. Yep. Because their foot is just so it it can't you can't get all the points. Right? Yeah. Then they're just doing this all the time. So there's no movement up the chain. It's just a body that's stuck. Like imagine you're lifting with two peg legs. There's no movement there, yeah. right? If I can get my whole foot dialed into the ground, every joint will move perfectly, right? Things will move around the, my foot if I have all this contact. So every exercise, think about the exact same thing. You'll never have to cue anyone into anything. Just cue foot pressure, and it's super simple. Similar to the lat, he moves his rib gauge back, his scap can slide up, keeps his scap there, keeps his humerus there, nothing moves, drives tension through the bicep. Now if we talk about like shoulder stability, right? Getting stable in the ranges that we open up, we're crushing biceps and also stabilizing scap and also stabilizing shoulder joint, everything at once, right? So now none of this, all this, useless if we do this. Exactly why I love doing this. So good litmus test here for that one. You see, he can push biceps till failure without scap and humerus going everywhere, yeah. right? So if I'm up here and five reps into the set, everything's going crazy here, I need to figure out stability at the shoulder, the scap, probably not the best idea for me, right? I'm probably not that strong in a press or a row, right? Cuba's dialed in here and here. He can stabilize everything, nothing's moving. He can drive that bicep till failure. So this is actually something back to the covered in pre skit level one. And ever since then, I've had this movement in, in my sessions, religiously, every single, pretty much, uh, between about five to 10 days. And I think it's definitely paid off when it comes to my pressing and my shoulder stability. So it's not only a movement that allows you to get a bigger bicep, but, it also improves stability across my over lifts. So it's a movement that I definitely advise and programming for a lot of people, myself included. That's something that they staple always. And sometimes, for my actual prep work before pressing, I will do a set of this as well. Yeah. And then again, I get a nice juicy bicep pump, but I find I'm a lot more comfortable in any pressing movement off the back of doing this as well. Right, especially with the bicep. As you move out here, the rotator cuff doesn't do as much the bicep connects literally into your shoulder joint. And where the people tear the shit most. Exactly. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Last exercise here, or close to the last, right? If we need a ton of cues here, we fucked up before. Right, we shouldn't need a ton of cues because we should be ready or it's a bad exercise selection. Right, also it's a bicep machine. We also shouldn't need a lot of cues, but we should need a lot of cues maybe at the start. Right, definitely in the prep. Once we get to the end, exercise selection is king. We just choose exercises where we're ready and we don't need to think about anything except pushing output. Same thing we've been talking about. On this side, 
I always lose this part of my hand. I'm always out here. And this shoulder always comes over. Right, so just like a foot rolling in and out, I want to try to find equal pressure on all parts of my hand while I'm doing this. Whatever I'm grabbing onto, my whole hand needs to grab. So like that's kind of what I'm thinking about here, just because I have a tendency to roll in, roll up here. No good. <laughs> right, my people, that is a wrap up session over. And next, we're going to go through legs. Same again, lots of cues, lots of value for you to learn from, and hopefully take away for your own training. And again, expand your knowledge. Now, I'll put all the links below in the description how you can find Baxter to obviously use his services or jump on pre-scripts as well with him. So again, that will be all down below in the description, guys. You want to hit him up now. Any else from you there? No. Yeah, happy Excited days. Legs. Yeah, excited. Now, next session you're going to see is uh, me and Bax and the crew smashing legs up. So peace out for now. Take care, guys. Like, share, subscribe, like the video. We'll see you again soon.